Welcome to Fat Logic, where we learn that much of the anti-diet advice is actually coming from big food. This one's brought to us by Abby Rose. It was originally published in the Washington Post. As obesity rises, big food and dietitians push anti-diet advice. Obviously, I can't read the whole article, but I'll read a few tidbits. General Mills, maker of Cocoa Puffs and Lucky Charms cereals, has launched a multi-pronged campaign that capitalizes on the teachings of the anti-diet movement, an investigation by the Washington Post and the examination has found. General Mills has toured the country, touting anti-diet research it claims proves the harm of food shaming. It has showered giveaways on registered dietitians who promote its cereals online with the hashtag derail the shame and sponsored influencers who promote its sugary snacks. You know, I shouldn't be surprised by all of this, but every time I think I'm being paranoid, it always seems like a couple years later, somebody proves that what I was afraid of was actually true. In this case, I thought I was being paranoid by thinking that corporations only wanted our money and would stop at nothing to get it. But it turns out I was actually correct. It was only being paranoid about being paranoid. And they also found that the majority of influencers who used anti-diet language also were paid to promote products from food, beverage, and supplement companies. I thought they were going to say like 5, 10%, but the majority, over 50%. The other 40% or whatever it is are just hoping, I imagine, to cash in on that sweet General Mills money. Cats and Jigsaws replies to all of that. Biggest non-surprise of my life. It's been obvious for a while that anti-diet and intuitive eating dietitians and influencers were getting paid to push ridiculous concepts like food is just food, ice cream is no less healthy than a tomato. Some are now just outright doing commercials for specific products. Kodiak waffles are the intuitive eating choice. Suitable Blueberry brings us Hashtag, I'm beginning to think that skinniness isn't real, is that people are making it up and all torturing themselves constantly. Hashtag, but I also know that most dieting doesn't really work for people to lose weight anyway, so like, I guess some people really do just get hashtag skinny. It's weird. Uh, you can just go outside and see skinny people. What's up with this skinny people denial? Lochara replies, I get a similar thing from my obese family members, which is to say most of them, when I talk about my higher mileage cycling exploits. They insist I must be torturing myself to enjoy regularly riding 100 miles or more in a day, and just don't believe me when I say it's the most fun thing I do, and I look forward to those rides a lot, especially when they're with friends. Ms. Beaver brings us. This is somebody replying to a meme which was intended to be helpful. It was a picture of a skinny person looking at themselves in the mirror and seeing a fat person. It says, many autistic people struggle with body dysphoria. And someone replies to that by putting caution tapes all over that and writing, attention content creators, please be cautious when choosing your media. I have seen this type of image countless times. Shaming fat people has no place in education or advocacy. Let's do better. Maybe instead of a caution, just don't. I loathe seeing this type of image. It's wildly fatphobic, even if that's not the intention. So much dehumanization and abuse of fat people is perpetuated by this type of messaging, even if unintended. I just want to scroll my feed without getting messaging that my body is someone's nightmare. Find another way to explore body dysmorphia. Here's my thoughts. The reason that this is the messaging is that if you're at a healthy weight and you see yourself as fat, then that might lead you to losing an excessive amount of weight. And even fat activists admit that being very underweight is very unhealthy for you. So this person, because they're seeing themselves as fat no matter what they weigh at, is causing health problems for themselves. If the problem was the other way, and they were fat and saw themselves as thin, it wouldn't be as big a deal, because being overweight tends to be less unhealthy for you than being very underweight. Hizzlefish brings us this one. If you're gaining weight, you're eating a surplus of calories. If you're losing weight, you're eating a deficit of calories. It's simple, but most people want to make it complicated. Not only is this a bad take, but even if it was this simple, it would only apply to able-bodied neurotypical people. Let's remember that sentence for a second, but let's keep going. 
By insisting on this rhetoric, you perpetuate ableism and even bigotry. This makes people think they should starve themselves and shame them for wanting to eat more when their bodies tell them they're hungry. It's not a healthy promotion. You shouldn't be posting this. I ate Kirby replies to the part about neurotypical people being able to break the laws of physics. I am disabled and autistic. Losing weight just fine. I must be rare. I roll. This is from Modworthy. You know what? I thought I'd seen everything, but I'm literally fudging speechless right now. My university's counseling center is so fudging untrained of fat phobia that they have a pamphlet on body size diversity and acceptance, which I had been shocked was offered at all, but I apparently shouldn't have got my expectations higher than the depths of the Mariana Trench, because after a very horrible experience of fat phobia in counseling there today, I opened the pamphlet to read that thin people are oppressed by being thin, and I'm somehow not exaggerating in any fudging way when I say that's exactly what the pamphlet claimed. Here's what the pamphlet actually says. While there is much pressure to be thin, size oppression does not spare those who are naturally thin either. Thin people often are oppressed by the voluptuous and muscular ideals, and can be as dissatisfied with their bodies and themselves as anyone else. And if not that, they're often the target of others' envy, jealousy, and ill will, for no other reason than their body sizes. They're claiming that the pamphlet is talking about people being oppressed for being thin. That's not what the pamphlet claims. The pamphlet is talking about how even if you are thin, you might still feel bad about your body. Because some people are more voluptuous or muscular. Or even some people are even thinner, that might make you feel bad about yourself too. They're just talking about the fact that everyone has their own point of view and might be suffering in their own way. Here's some of their intelligent replies. The pamphlet says, size oppression does not spare those who are naturally thin either. Their reply, huh, huh, are you sure about that? You want to take a second go at that, bud? They're not explaining what they think is wrong with that. And from my point of view, there is nothing wrong with that, so I don't get what they're saying. They go on, the pamphlet says thin people are oppressed by voluptuous and muscular ideals. Buddy, you can't even fudging say the word fat. The word fat is not written even once in this pamphlet. But you sure had no problem writing thin everywhere and voluptuous is just your fudging code word for thin with a big butt fudge off voluptuous is not a code word it's a clearly defined word voluptuous means curvaceous and sexually attractive usually talking about women so the reason they're not using the word fat here is because they're not talking about being fat the pamphlet also says thin people can be just as dissatisfied with their bodies and themselves as anyone else. And they reply, huh, really? You're going to claim that? Yeah, that, that's what people are going to claim. Do you have an argument against that? Or are you just going to like say, nah, because that's the whole deal with some eating disorders is people feel pressure to continue losing weight and why some people get a ton of plastic surgery to make themselves look different than they actually do, even if they look good in the first place. The pamphlet goes on to say that thin people are the target of people's jealousy and envy, which you use to claim thin people are oppressed and then never stop to fudging think with your brain about why everyone wants to look like them. I don't know. Maybe there's an indication of a power imbalance somewhere in there. Some reason for why thin people are praised and them being praised is your definition of oppression. I don't know what world they're living in, but when people are jealous and envious of other people, Praise isn't usually the thing that comes out. It's usually just anger and poison comes out of their mouth. Much like what they're writing here. The pamphlet also says, They are oppressed for no other reason than their body size. And this is where they completely lose their cool. And start talking nonsense. No reason? There's no reason why fat people literally do bad things to themselves to be thin other than fudging aesthetics, not the mutilation, police brutality, starvation, lack of access to vital resources like clothes and healthcare, fatal medical neglect and abuse, being left to die in natural disasters like hurricanes, the wage gaps, the job discrimination, workplace harassment, forced separation of families, not being allowed to adopt children, and the list goes fudging on. Thin people only experience thinness and no amount of privilege over fat people. I want to kill, maim, strangle, and rip flesh with my teeth right now. Smile. Um, yeah, I think it's time for them to see some professional help. 
because that is not a proper reply to anything. And worse, a lot of the things they complained about were either not real or things that they're blowing wildly out of proportion. Katie Grant brings us Fun fudging fact, actually. You can be over 300 pounds and have no fat related, which isn't actually a thing. Do some fudging research. Health issues. Sparky Zell replies, Assuming this OP is late teens, early 20s, sure, you can possibly be that weight without any issues, but it won't stay that way for long. And when it catches up, it's going to be miserable, and you'll have a much harder time losing the weight than if you did before the health problems caught up. Kit in the Basement brings us something about fan fiction. Somebody writes, Skinny people can be in a story without it being fatphobic. Get over yourself. And someone replies, Get your bingo cards, everyone! It's time to check off skinny people being offended when they are not obviously the center of attention and, oh, skinny people taking any discussion of fat phobia as a direct attack. So, okay, so who has bingo? I certainly do. How'd they get bingo after two points? Do they not know how bingo works? Yes, skinny people can be in a fic without it being fat phobic, but if the writer claims that their fic is open ended and the reader character is meant to describe as wide a range of people as possible, then it is fatphobic if there are unconscious descriptions or implications that the reader character is a thin person. Most of the time, the point of view character, unless they look in a mirror or other people talk about how they look, you have no idea how they really look and you can imagine anything you want. For example, in the murder bot diaries, you can imagine the main character looking like a man or a woman and it doesn't change the story in the slightest. Anyway, they continue. One of the most common implications that the reader character is a thin person, describing the character wearing a t-shirt or any other piece of clothing that belongs to a thin canon character, especially if it is described as being oversized on the reader. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay. I have to stop here and say that I'm a little confused about their point. Usually, the point of view character being open-ended is in terms of their personality. They're usually a blank slate. It doesn't have really that much to do with their appearance because most people can just imagine themselves in another person's body. It's not that big a deal. Other common indicators that the writer is a thin person and is unconsciously picturing a thin YN when writing their fic, saying that the canon character lifted the reader character off the ground completely, especially if the canon character is someone non-athletic like Spencer Reed. Spencer Reed, by the way, is a character from Criminal Minds. He's thin, but he doesn't look like he's starving to death. So being able to pick up another person is not impossible for most males, even if they're slightly unathletic. Saying that the canon character's hands looked large or are large in comparison to the parts of the reader character's body, especially in her upper arms or her waist, saying that the canon character dwarfs her in any way is just big ick. I have to skip one of the ones they mention here because it's wildly inappropriate for this channel. The presence of skinny people in fanfics in itself is not fat phobic, though I do believe that skinny people dominate way too many spaces as it is, and as I've said before, I always write my fix with fat readers in mind first and let skinny people enjoy my fix as a perk. If you do any of these things and you don't put a blatant warning on your fix that they feature a skinny, thin reader character, then you are being fat phobic. A plus-sized fanfiction enjoyer shouldn't have to get halfway through your supposedly inclusive fic and be jump-scared by the implication of thinness. Especially if it is a romantic fic, they are being fed the idea that only thin people can be loved by their favorite character in a world where they have already been told a thousand times that their fatness is not desirable. Fix should be not only an escape for us, but a place for us to be loved for our bodies despite our supposed flaws, which is why I have so many fics featuring plus-sized reader characters and I continuously preach ways to avoid fat phobia and fix for those who might not know about their unconscious biases when writing. But as usual, skinny people get all up in arms when fat phobia is even mentioned because they think it's an attack on them somehow. Lissai. Crazy Cat Minnesota replies what I was thinking. I'm sorry, that's just an exhausting amount of emotional energy to put into analyzing fanfic. This is a lot like some guy complaining about the videos on one of the various video sites with the letter X in the name and complaining that the guy doesn't look exactly like them. Who cares? 
Not only do people not care, they don't want to read your ridiculous rant. Hi, this is the end of the video. Thanks to everyone who made it this far. Please consider clicking like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you really, really liked it, consider becoming a member. For just $1, you get videos a few days early. Also, at the $3 level, you get your name read out at the end of these videos. And at the $5 level, you get one free video roughly every two weeks. Speaking of people at the higher levels, special thanks go out to Emmett McNally, Cupcake or Death, Wolf Child Rusk, Just a Girl, Maria P., Syringa H., Laura Christine, Rue the Viewer, and Grey Warden Invasion.